Chapter Seventeen of *The Strenuous Life*. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Bob Newfeld. *The Strenuous Life* by Theodore Roosevelt. Chapter Seventeen: National Duties. Address at Minnesota State Fair, September Second, nineteen o one. In his admirable studies of twentieth-century problems. Dr. Lyman Abbott has pointed out that we are a nation of pioneers, that the first colonists to our shores were pioneers, and that pioneers selected out from among the descendants of these early pioneers, mingled with others selected afresh from the old world, pushed westward into the wilderness and laid the foundations for new commonwealths. They were men of hope and expectation, of enterprise and energy. For the men of dull content, or more dull despair, had no part in the great movement into and across the new world. Our country has been populated by pioneers, and therefore it has in it more energy, more enterprise, more expansive power than any other in the wide world. You who I am now addressing stand for the most part but one generation removed from these pioneers. You are typical Americans, for you have done the great, the characteristic, the typical work of our American life. In making homes and carving out careers for yourselves and your children, you have built up this state. Throughout our history, the success of the homemaker has been but another name for the upbuilding of the nation. The men who with axe in the forests and pick in the mountains and plow on the prairies pushed to completion the dominion of our people over the American wilderness, have given the definite shape to our nation. They have shown the qualities of daring, endurance, and far-sightedness, of eager desire for victory and stubborn refusal to accept defeat, which go to make up the essential manliness of the American character. Above all, they have recognized in practical form the fundamental law of success in American